nothing is what it seems. Nothing. I have entered the Chapel Perilous and have emerged a pathetic wretch. I curse the day I ever heard the utterance of new blue apples. What? It's like being born again, this quest for knowledge. I still don't understand why you want me to do this paper. To expand your horizons in a sociological aspect. Sometimes an entire world can exist, parallel with yours right in front of your nose, and yet unseen. Just because you don't know what to look for. As if you didn't even have the eyes to see. And it's because you have no frame of, of reference. You must learn extremes in order to appreciate the vast and intricate balance of the human animal. But ghost stories, boogeymen, things that go bump in the night. I just, I find the subject childish. Mortal horror, childish? No, just, just the medium. I mean, I'm sure you have the eyes to see. Sorry, bad analogy. It's okay, Harris. Faith? Howard, come in, come in. Harris, do you know Howard? Yeah, uh, Howard's the RA at my building. How's the new roommate working out? Great, great. It's like we've known each other for years. Good. Howard, you have some experience with esoterica and paranoia, right? Uh, yeah, why? Harris, perhaps he can help you with your blue apple conundrum. Oh, yeah, sure. Oh, Howard, I'm sorry. I have to take a rain check today. I have a seminar on pension that I have to attend to. Sure, Faith, no problem. And you? You're okay? Yeah, you know best. <laughs> Faith's been pushing me to write this paper on the nature and perception of fear in modern day society as influenced by literature and the media. It's kind of a downer, don't you think? Yeah, well, you know Faith. There's not much I can do to persuade her otherwise, so I've been researching a lot of the horror works of the great freaks. Lovecraft, Arthur Machen, Clark Ashton Smith, Robert Chambers, and a real obscure guy named Ronald Allen Holt. Yikes. Actually, on an analytical level, it is rather interesting. I mean, this guy Allen Holt takes social phobias to the intensity of the paranormal. I mean, his diaries are these incoherent babblings about ancient ecumenical secret societies, bizarre synchronicities, conspiracies lurking in the shadows, and something about blue apples. You ever read Alan Holt? Yeah, he scares me. I think his grave's up here somewhere. Great. <laughs> so, how are you at conspiracy? I don't know. Good, I guess. Sort of a hobby with me. You know what, there's this bookstore that you should check out. It's got a lot of subversive stuff, counterculture, esoterica, trans-cybernostic, conspiracy up the wazoo. It's called Chapel Perilous Bookstore on 23rd Street. Chapel Perilous. Yeah, you should really check it out. And I'll dig up some stuff off the internet for you. Hey. What do you want? I'm good. Uh, rolling Lock? Uh, Rosalind Howard. Hey, I'm Rosalind Chapel. Hi, Howard Phillips. Are you at Columbia? Oh, no. Minimum wage slave out of high school. <sighs> She's an actress playing Ophelia in a little off Broadway production. Wow, how off? Way off. Hoboken. Ouch. <laughs> but hey, Hamlet. It's one of the great conspiracy works of all time. What? How do you get conspiracy from Hamlet? Well, Hamlet's raison d'etre is to expose the conspiracy of his mother and his uncle. And he does. He was right. The conspiracy existed. And look how it all turns out. Not good. It never is. When it comes to conspiracies. Well then, to portions falls.
Good book. Do we regard God as the omnipresent force of creation or a biological phenomenon, a sort of surge protector for the mind? It's a ceiling to our understanding, this socially inherent need to find a belief in the divine. And as such, it's a limitation that suggests a geometry to God, um, a geometry to God with definable borders and applicable laws. But you see, as such, we can use this structure, this matrix, to gain insight into our capacity as human beings to truly perceive God without religious parameters and without fear. You see, we need to become one with this true knowing. And as this one, ourselves become like the winged serpents of old. Oh, well, thank Hi. you very much. Hi. Uh, Amaris. Hi, Rose. I'd like to talk to you about winged serpents. Call me. Tommy. Is that Vic Tayback? Yes. Yes, it is. Why? He, uh, I think he has something to do with the Kennedy assassination. Where did you get this? Howard Phillips, the RA. The New World Order and you. Ten helpful facts about the Illuminati? The truth is out there. Yeah, don't tell me. Paul's dead. Paul who? Paul McCartney. The funeral procession on the cover of Abbey Road. He blew his mind out in a car, 28 if? No. What the hell are you talking about? Paul McCartney, he died in a car crash before Sgt. Pepper's. It's hidden in all the albums. I am the walrus, but he's not. Okay. So, who killed JFK? Okay. Did you go through the shit? No, uh, I'm still trying to figure out some sort of methodology in all these alleged secret societies in our midst. Some are CIA splinter groups, some misinformation societies, like this guy, Tex Mars and the Living Truth Ministry. And then there's the John Dillinger Died For You Society, mm -hmm. the Campus Crusade for Thulu, the Captain Kangaroo Died For You Society in Crunton, Nebraska, in addition to the illuminated order of Zippy the Pinhead, who've just recruited Kuderhof Heinz, bringing their total enlistment to four. Did you know that Hitler killed JFK? Hitler. Well, he didn't pull the trigger, but he gave the order from his secret base within the hollow earth. How about the Vatican killed JFK? Walter Cronkite killed JFK. The Jello Corporation killed JFK. <laughs> Here's a good one. I like this one. JFK killed JFK. What? This guy bases his theory on the fact that in the 60s, the only person with enough power to kill the president was the president. Therefore, the acting JFK was most likely an anti-libidinous clone who started abusing his power as he sat in for the commander in chief, <laughs> and thus was rubbed out by the real JFK. Wait, there's more. This particular clone survived the assassination attempt with only half a brain and went on to become Ronald Reagan. <sighs> Just remember, when dealing with the field of academics, Try to remain objective. Fabulous, too. <laughs> Thank you.
grinning like saviors that have just popped our cherry. I know there'll be a gnashing of teeth and rattling of sabers, except for the fluoridation of the water supply. We indeed have the teeth, but no longer the desire to gnash. They've let communist subversion sap and then purify our precious bodily fluids. Our sabers have been rendered limp and unrattled. <laughs> So are they after you too? No. Just because they aren't after you doesn't mean they won't get you. It's just research. Student? Mm-hmm. Where? John Hansen. John Hansen? Hey, Goat Boy here went to Hansen. Goat Boy. Yeah, Goaty Goat Boy, AKA Reese the Reasoner. And you would be Ferret Boy? They call me Zeus. And uh, this is Paul. I'm the walrus. So, uh, what's your major? Sociology. So sociology wow. Ooh, pretty cerebral. What was your major? Statistical theory with a minor in applied linguistics. Really? What are you doing now? You know, stuff. Good for you. He can afford to be a loser, he's rich. No, 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 seriously, he is. His father's a very important man in international banking. Does that, uh, does that frighten you? Should it? Sure, international bankers secretly control the world. The Rockefellers, the Trilateral Commission, the Bilderbergers, them along with UN troops are about to take over, turn us all into mindless slaves. It's the conspiracy. Yeah, a little paranoid there. She doesn't believe me. No one believes me. It's a conspiracy. Okay, let me guess. We're food harvested by nameless Lovecraftian monsters feeding on our immortal horrors as they plunge us into the abyss of unspeakable terrors. That's one theory. Come on, spare me the New World Order hysteria. It's there, right in front of our eyes, yet none dare call it conspiracy. Jesus Christ, what are you guys, John Birch Society? John Birch, what are you, Jesus Christ Society? No. Actually, I'm an atheist. We're all atheists. Thank, Thank God. God. We believe in uh, free will, Charles Darwin, and a steady stream of extraterrestrials from Uranus that are secretly playing out the roles of all of our great religious leaders. You see, when you defy the system, you gotta, you know, make one crazy claim. That way, at least you can plead insanity. Free will. <laughs> <laughs> free will. <laughs> I'm just kidding around with you. Look, uh, we can set you up. Like this guy here. Uh, yo, Malfolio? Malfolio? Oh yeah, this guy knows his shit. Come here. Uh, she needs some uh, intel on the, uh, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Wanna get a cup of coffee? Um, yeah, sure. Basically all power elite conspiracy theories can be traced back to uh, one clandestine source. The Vulcans. What, like Mr. Spock? <laughs> no, not, not like Mr. Spock. The real Vulcans are from the planet Vulca, which is the same size as Earth, and in fact, well, sharing the same orbital path, but always on the exact opposite side of the sun, so we can never see it. Okay. And the Vulcans have invaded Earth. Now, now get this. The Earthling translation of the word Vulcans is, are you ready for this? Jews. Oh, um, my pen seems to have run out of ink. No, that's all right. I'm way here. Get another. Uh, I, I would have to go all the way back to my apartment. It's okay. I live in Maine. The conspiracy wants to possess every aspect of your life. So they started with the basics, in your home. That way, they'll always be there. So where are they? 
and sponges. Sponges? Sponges. It's the liquid soap conspiracy. You'd think with modern technology that sponges wouldn't mildew after a couple of days' use, would you? Huh. Forget it. Now they got this brush deal going. Of course, you use five times as much soap, but then again, no mildew. And then suddenly, the Council of Foreign Relations or some such organization comes up with the mildewless sponge brush, and everything you ever believed in, ever trusted, is shattered. Did the Declaration of Independence offer us the mildewless sponge brush? No, no. I mean, come on, come on, get real. I'm telling you, any minute now, there are going to be NATO troops marching down Fifth Avenue and hoarding us all into re-education camps. And we will go willingly. Now, you put that in your brush and scrub it. You had a question? Yeah. What do you know about conspiracy stuff? Who do you work for? No one, I'm just a student. Yeah, right. Who do you work for? Who do you work for? <clears throat> Fuck. Conspiracies. What does Nephilus know about conspiracies? Well, the conspiracy controls the media at all levels and is initiating a satanic plot to bring about Armageddon. The 70s was when the beginnings of the apocalypse was broadcast in a TV show. What show, you ask? Well, then, let's see. What does post-apocalyptic life offer? No. Promise the righteous. Uh, heaven on earth. Right. Heaven on earth. In other words, happy days. That's right, happy days, and I can prove it. Numbers, happy days, nine letters. Number of the beast, 666. Three sixes. Three plus six is nine. There's more. 666. Six plus six plus six is 18. One plus eight, nine. Nine. We've seen the face of Satan. Let me guess. Patsy. Close. Chachi. Once again, the proof is in the numbers. Scott Bayo. Nine fucking letters, man. Pretty scary, huh? Yeah. Nine. You can't run from the numbers. Scott Bayo is the Antichrist. Hey, Zeus. So how was the Nefster? Well, the wheel's spinning, but the hamster's dead. Yeah. What'd you expect, a 33-degree Freemason just vomiting out the truth about everything? No, but your selection has been, quite frankly, fruitcakes. You didn't ask us. I could tell you that the Vatican and the Mafia are the same thing. I know the Pearl Harbor never happened. In fact, they shot the miniatures on the same soundstage that they faked the Apollo moon landings. Wait, it gets weirder. Cattle mutilations. Crop circles everywhere. Strange, unexplained phenomena. And, and you know, we're not talking about raining frogs here or tortillas imbued with the face of the Virgin Mary. I have a pimento loaf the shape of Elvis. Young Elvis or fat Elvis? Uh, fat Elvis, it's a pimento loaf. Uh, let me guess. Space aliens in Area 51 fit in here somewhere. UFOs, alien abductions, rectal probes are us. You know, the truth about extraterrestrials is infinitely more sinister than you'd suspect. Known in covert circles as the Barney conspiracy. Barney? Y you mean like the... Yeah, yeah, the big happy fucking purple dinosaur the kids love. Well, guess what the evil alien invaders look exactly like. He's wrong. It's the Teletubbies. Barney. Okay, but when the Teletubby shit hits the fan, don't say I didn't warn you. Uh, either way, just out of curiosity, what's with the evil Barney aliens anyway? Teletubbies. <coughs> uh, look, in, in 30 years or so, this next Barney-loving generation of Earthlings is going to welcome these Barney alien invaders with open arms singing, uh, we love you, whatever. Takeover is going to be fucking cake, man. This is the best you can do. In other words, there's no conspiracy. All right. Oh, here's a, here's a little nursery rhyme you can sing to your kids sometime when they have trouble falling asleep. Lee Harvey Oswald was a lone nut. 
that killed the president all alone, all alone, all alone. Lee Lee Harvey Harvey Oswald Oswald was a lone nut who killed killed the the president all alone. The Nazi Thule Society built the real series saucer craft that landed on the moon in 1942, the same model craft used to flee Germany in 1945 to New Schwabenland, Antarctica, where the subterranean capital of New Berlin now claims a population of two million. The society waits eagerly as they watch Michael Jackson slowly mutate back into his original alien form. The transcript received by LBJ from Aristotle Onassis read, Oswald was a lone nut. Got it, Lyndon? Otherwise, Air Force One might have an unfortunate accident. And it was Onassis who had J. Edgar Hoover's apple pie poison, which is an overtly blatant message to all us Americans, don't you think? But of course you don't think. Nobody really does because of MKUltra. MKUltra? Sounds like a laundry detergent. Nope. Top secret CIA operation that got busted testing LSD on unsuspecting citizens while trying to perfect brainwashing techniques, but allegedly failed miserably. Yeah, right. The Moonies, Scientology, the Symbonies Liberation Army, These guys perfected brainwashing, but the CIA could never quite get it right? Come on. Misinformation should be conclusive evidence of guilt. Or incompetence. I'm sorry, Howard, but I'm afraid your conspiracy is, how should I say this, chaos in a paranoid world of greed, avarice, and fragile order. Harris, that is I'm not saying it's impossible, just unlikely in the extreme. So what you're saying is just chance. Rolls of the dice, acts of personal gain, that sort of thing. Confusion, ignorance, paranoia, yes, it's the way of the world. It's not very interesting. Well, you're right. Reality has an annoying tendency to be boring. And and it's the nature of the human animal to write interesting fiction and apply it to that which is usually of otherwise little interest, like, like reality. So if there's no conspiracy, what is it then? Nothing but coincidence together with incompetence and paranoia looks virtually identical. Three words for you. J-F-K. One isolated incident. Two words, Karen Silkwood. Oh, come on. Vince Foster, Chappaquiddick. Too many suicides and and, and car accidents under most peculiar circumstances. You know, the CIA really have to get better writers. Anytime some journalist gets close or somebody is about to blow the whistle, they conveniently commit suicide or die in some hit and run car accident? Come on, it's getting old. I want to hear died tragically in a mine shaft explosion. Who's going to question that? And their explanation for UFO phenomena is pathetic. Weather balloons, yeah, right. Uh, The planet Venus, please. Marsh gas, it's like I'm sure. Oh, oh, here's one. Phosphorescent owls that glow in the dark after eating diseased fungi. Howard, I'm fascinated. Excuse me. Come with me. Howard, I'm fascinated. You want another? Yeah, sure. Hey. Hey. Are the bathrooms back here? Yeah. Hey, Eris, I was wondering if maybe sometime you would, we could, you know, just you and me. Howard, tell you what, ask me again when I'm done with the paper. Sure, right. That's no problem. Okay, I'll bite. What does that mean? Hey, Zeus, she's biting. Yeah. Well, hold on to your shit. Ready for this? Because this is Nietzsche's abyss, man. The deeper you look into this, the deeper it looks into you. I'm talking Chapel Perilous here. Oh, hold on. You lost me like days ago. First of all, what the hell is the Chapel Perilous? It's a place. It's a crossroads that when you stumble upon it, you're never the same again when you pass through the Chapel Perilous, you come out either a wary agnostic or you come out kicking and screaming as they drag your friends and loved ones away into the darkness. I don't understand. Well, you will. You will. Okay, now, this. Besides being the seal of the United States of America. Well, now, uh, this also happens to be the uh, logo 
for a secret society called the Bavarian Illuminati, which was formed in uh, May of 1776, which some claim masterminded both the American and French revolutions. Here you go. Now you have the pyramid, right? Many ruled by less progressively until all are ruled by one, the all-seeing eye, new world order. Now some claim that the Illuminati now, today, secretly rules the world, orchestrates it at all levels, spearheaded by the ultra-powerful round table of nine. Oh, shit. Happy days. Excuse me? Happy days has nine letters. Yeah. Yeah, so does Scott Bale. You're starting to catch on to this thing, aren't you? Scarily, yes. Yeah. So, this symbol is the seal for both the United States and the Illuminati. Mm -hmm. One and the same. Go figure. Do you know what noon blue apples means? Amadi, pomme bleu. Where'd you hear that? I was researching my paper on the foundations of social fear, and uh, I was reading this guy named Ronald Allenhold. Oh, you've heard of him. Yeah. Forget Allenhold, he's a dead end. Come with me. Here's the story. Late 1800s, little dirt poor parish in France called Rennes Le Chateau gets a new priest. Have a seat. Uh, his name is Father Beranger Saunier. Now, <clears throat> he decides he's going to do some renovations on his church, right? Legend has it that this church sat on a foundation that went way, way back. Cathars, uh, Knights Templars, Romans even. So he's doing these renovations on his church and he comes upon some columns. They bust open. They're hollow. Inside are four parchments. Now, from that moment on, this poor priest starts spending millions of dollars rebuilding his church, his house, neighboring churches, buying choice paintings from the Louvre. You know, suddenly he's throwing gobs of cash at everybody. Whose money was it? Good question. No one knows. What was on the parchments? Codes, on the two that we know of at least. Biblical quotes, but after a painstaking decoding process, you get blah, 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 French, 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 Amadi Pomme Bleu. Which means? English translation. Shepherdess, no temptation that Pont saint hold the key piece 481 by the cross. This horse of God I complete or I destroy this demon guardian at noon blue apples. Which means... No fucking clue. But, but it screams hidden code, as do the works of art that uh, Saunier tried to procure, like uh, Poussin, right here, and Tenier. Paintings that reveal a little mysterious Latin phrase, et in Arcadia ego, which means dick, but oddly enough appears throughout history in paintings, in poems, what have you. Now, some say that Saunier found the secrets of the Knights Templars themselves. You know about the Templars, right? Vaguely. Really? Huh. Knights Templars, named after the uh, Temple of Solomon. Badass warrior monks that kicked righteous booty in the Crusades. Interesting start, though. After the First Crusade, the Christians had hold of the Holy Land for the first time. So to protect it from the massive Turkish army, they formed the Knights Templars. Guess how many? Uh, a lot. Nine. What, armies? No. Guys. Nine guys. <laughs> those Turks must have shit kittens when they saw those nine guys coming out. <laughs> that makes no sense whatsoever. Well then, what were they doing? And why did they need a cover story? What were they doing? Glad you asked. Archaeological evidence suggests that they were archaeologists. And they excavated the Temple of Solomon. Some say they found the secret. The Holy of Holies, supposedly placed there by Solomon himself. The power of God. Because practically overnight, the Knights Templars became the richest, the most powerful men in Europe. Sound familiar? All that from nine guys. 
Sunday, Monday, happy days. So you're never going to guess what happened. We're at rehearsal, and I mention Hamlet being a conspiracy gig. And the director starts like, going off on this Pat Robertson thing. Oh, no, not Pat. Anything but Pat. So he hands me this flyer warning me about something called Zog, which is planning to kill all the Christians in the world and then giving the rest of us over to the New World Order. And this guy was like way serious. I couldn't believe it. You'd be surprised at who believes what out there. Let me ask you a question. Do you think there's a conspiracy? Well, I don't know if the government has proof of UFOs or if the CIA shot Kennedy or what. But I do know they're hiding something from us without a doubt. That's obvious. What about religion or orthodox learning like science? I just see whenever someone has a new idea or new theory, it's like the whole scientific community suddenly turns against them. Why? Usually it's in fear of ridicule, getting their grants yanked. It's just the way the system works. See, I thought science was for the advancement of human knowledge. But it isn't. It's just to protect what's already there, whether it's right or wrong. I don't get that. And as for religion, why do they hide things like the Dead Sea Scrolls? Or burn libraries? Or ban things like geometry? Believe it or not, geometry used to be heretical in the eyes of the church. Methinks they doth protest too much. Gee, sure sounds a hell of a lot like a conspiracy, doesn't it? No. Now that you mention it, yeah, it does. You know, unless there's some deeper reason for all of it, that's beyond me. You know what? I'm a rebel. Okay, no, I know. I'm quiet about it, but I mean... Maybe I found my means to vent. What, by, by shattering the foundation of every notion we've ever held true? Hmm. Okay. I but know, yeah, okay. The fortune is fools. The ever-present conspiracy perhaps illustrates mankind's fear of ostracization, even as far back and with such illustrious artists as Shakespeare. This sort of widespread commonality would indicate either the utter fear of such a conspiracy or an intense desire for it. Initially, I was trying to find a connection in, in a term I kept coming across. Noon blue apples? Ah, the mysterious Saunière documents from Rennes Le Chateau. Yeah. Then I saw this psychotic painting called Noon Blue Apples by a, a painter who signed his painting with a winged serpent like yours. Well, the winged serpent iconography is vast and ancient, to say the least. Um, it was very well known to the Mayans and the Aztecs in the form of Kukla Khan and Quetzalcoatl. And in India, the spiritual life force called the Kundalini is symbolized by a feathered serpent. And there is a religious text that is rife with winged serpent lore called the Bible. There's a passage in Genesis that most church officials would just as soon forget even exist. Genesis 6, 4 states that when the angels came to earth, they had their way with human women. But there's this apocryphal text called the Book of Enoch. Now, the Book of Enoch states that when the angels came to the earth, they brought with them this great lore of knowledge that covers everything from writing to medicine to savage weaponry, but there's an older knowledge, ancient even to the angels, that Enoch apparently hid in a sort of time capsule. Now, thousands of years later, Solomon found this ancient knowledge and hid it under his temple. And it was that ancient knowledge that the Knights Templars were after, and some say that they even found it. The Book of Enoch also states that angels were called watchers and oddly enough, serpents. Angels have wings, winged serpents. And it was the watcher Gabriel who apparently led Eve astray. He was the serpent that brought the knowledge to mankind. I thought the serpent was supposed to be Satan. Well, when it comes to biblical doctrine, I'm afraid that the truth might not even be out there anymore.
too many oral traditions, too many mistranslations, too many political filtrations. For example, the first line of the Bible is a mistranslation. It states, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. But in the original Hebrew texts, it doesn't say Jehovah, the one true God. It states Elohim, which is plural. So the gods created heaven and earth. It gets better. Elohim is feminine. So the goddesses created heavens and earth. Oh, you go, girls. So what other mistranslations is Western civilization based on? Adam and Eve? Satan, the intrinsic nature of good and evil. Now, these are serious questions. Speaking of the Knights Templar, your necklace, what does it mean? The Cross of Lorraine. My uncle had a ring just like it. Oh, is he a policeman? Yeah. How'd you know? Well, it's very popular among the police. It appears throughout history in suspicious circumstances. Nobody knows for sure what it means. And some say it represents the ancient knowledge that's hidden throughout history, indicating membership. What does it do for you? It accessorizes. So let me guess, Elvis shot JFK. Oh, this is better. One day in the Garden of Eden, Eve eats an apple and the holy shit hits the fan. These guys argued that the story of Adam and Eve was intentionally altered to weaken the place of women in society. <laughs> well, they sure as hell didn't take it out on apples. But I'll tell you what I think. The whole original sin thing, it's not happening. I mean, let's face it, honey, Adam was whipped. And because of it, you and I have been second-class citizens ever since. Worlds run by men with little bitty dicks. And that is the gospel truth. But what are we going to do about it? Well, apparently there's a lot more to this serpent allegory. <laughs> of course. I mean, realistically. If a snake had come to Eve in her garden, <laughs> she'd have killed that fucker in a blind panic. Yeah. That would have left a dead limp snake. Oh, how rich the symbolism. Mm -hmm. Do you have the Book of Enoch? Whoa! Sister, you just seriously entered the biblical world of weird fucking shit. That's actually the theological term. Uh, I'm gonna call you back. All right. Yeah. Come on. Come on. The Apocrypha. The Nag Hammadi Library, the Talmud of Jemanuel, the Book of Q, Mary Mag, etc., etc. If the church hasn't burned it yet, we got it here somewhere. You got the Old Testament, you got the New Testament. Well, this is the Testament on bad acid. I have a question. Yeah? If you don't believe in God, then why give any of this a second thought? Well, I believe in defying authority. And what greater authority is there to defy than God? I want to party with you, bro. Plus, there's always the off chance of historical truisms inherent in myth. I mean, history, religion, same difference. History's predominantly bullshit, too. Define bullshit. Well, a bull walked in, flexed its sphincter, and dropped a big steamy load of bullshit. Look, I mean, the only reason I prefer to believe all this crap is because it's so unbelievable. You know, it makes perfect sense in a society where everything's faked. I mean, logic, reality, fuck that noise. We're shown only what they want us to see. History is, is a propaganda piece. It's a lie. 
and it's rewritten and erased at the whims of those in power, baby. Now, take for instance that they have just discovered that the Sphinx is over 10,000 years old. Really? Mm hmm Well, the body of the Sphinx is eroded by precipitation, rain. Proven scientific fact. But it doesn't rain in Egypt. Good point. So the Sphinx has to be over 10,000 years old. Proof? Ah. Historians refuse to acknowledge it. And the pyramids? Look, we today could not build those things, known technically in archaeological terms as really big motherfuckers. Geometrically, they're, they're near perfect. They align exactly to the cardinal points. 30-ton blocks lifted 500 feet, cut so precisely that you can't fit a razor blade in between them. The base of the pyramid is in exact proportion to the circumference of the Earth. The height-to-base radius is encoded with an equation for pi, plus they align in layout and size to the layout and magnitude of the stars in Orion's belt. Now, history's explanation for all that? Coincidence. Blind luck. I mean, come on, nobody is that lucky. I mean, look at that. Look at that shit. How can you ignore that? But Orthodox history would have us believe that that perfection, impossibly built with millions of stone blocks over 5,000 cubic meters of granite and limestone that can only be cut with diamond head drills rotating at half a million RPMs was actually achieved with stone mallets, papyrus reeds, and a fucking donkey. I mean, look, there is not one scientific field. Geologists, architects, uh, engineers, limestone experts that doesn't claim that the accepted Egyptological theories are not only implausible, but stupid. And anyone who has the temerity to make a discovery there, see ya. <laughs> the guy who discovered a secret door inside the Great Pyramid, thrown out of the country. The guys who discovered water erosion on the Sphinx, gone. Banished, verboten, yeah. The Egyptologist in charge calls it information management. They're hiding something from us. And if there's anything that can teach us everything we need to know about ourselves as a species, this is it. The Great Pyramid. And we're being deliberately kept from it. And instead, we're given bullshit history. I mean, it is an impossibility that that thing exists. Fact. Mm, speculation. Mm, same difference. Okay. Another example. There's a star called Sirius. Uh, it's in the constellation of Canis Major. It's the brightest star in the sky. The Egyptians worshipped it, based their year on it. Anyway, there's a tribe in Africa now called the Dogon. Pretty primitive, but uh, they have this ritual worshipping Sirius. Now, they also believe that a long time ago, a race called the Nomo visited Earth from a planet that orbited the secondary star in the Sirius system. Ha ha ha, says modern man, ignorant brown savages, because Sirius is not a binary star system. One star, not two. But the Dogans had this whole thing mapped out very carefully, down to the length of the orbital period of this mysterious secondary star, 50 years, give or take. Well, 1970. Modern man builds this impressive fucking telescope, and they point it up to Sirius just for laughs, and guess what? It is a binary star system. Not only that, but the Dogen's 50-year orbital myth on the nose. This primitive tribe knew something they couldn't possibly have known. It's unexplainable. And uh, guess who the Dogen's ancient ancestor can be traced back to? The Egyptians. Now, the only explanation anyone's ever given for any of that is coincidence, blind luck, which to me is just as hard to believe as little green men from outer space. Gray men. Yeah, gray men. And the Dogans also called the Nomo the monitors. And I, I don't think they meant LCD displays. I think they meant... Watchers. Watchers, yeah. A.K.A. winged serpents. The bringers of an ancient knowledge. In this case, kept alive for thousands of years by the Dogans slipped through the sensors by supposedly harmless primitives. Now, <sighs> what else has been censored by civilization? Think about that, think about it. I mean, this one fragment of information is something so totally out there that it can conceivably change everything. I mean, everything that we have ever known. And you wonder why they don't want us to know about it?
et in Arcadia ego. These are the parchments where the message is encoded. Well, that Latin phrase is fairly simple. There's not much you can hide in that. Quite possibly an anagram. You unscramble the letters and you come up with something else. But the French, though, this is fairly obscure. I'm especially interested in the meaning of the last line about noon blue apples. Okay, yeah, yeah. I'll see what I can do. Your speaker acts as microphone. Your television screen acts as a camera lens. Men watching me, phone line clickings. I know too much. They listen. They are watching you. Firstly, if the church knew what half the stuff it preached really meant, they'd feel pretty fucking stupid. Most of Christian idolatry is hidden code, like the Holy Grail. Look. San Grail. Now, that's where the term Holy Grail comes from. It's one word, it's French. But the Grail that held the blood of Christ isn't mentioned anywhere in the New Testament. Nothing in, in any of the scrolls, but that's it. San Grael, Holy Grail. But if you split the word one letter over, you get San Grael, Royal Blood. The Holy Grail, the holder of the blood of Christ. Or is it the bloodline of Christ? The Royal Blood meaning he had children and a lineage. Is that the secret of the Knights Templars? Have you figured out noon blue apples yet? No. Then I don't know.
Eris? Whoa, girl, at ease. Sorry, weird night. Can I get Rosalind's number from you? I thought I might check out her play this weekend. Sure. Oh, sorry, I went through your stuff earlier, looking for the number, couldn't find it. I hope you don't mind. No, it's okay. That the sons of God saw the daughters of men, that they were fair, and they took them wives, and they bore children unto them. Were these watchers a very real race that brought ancient knowledge to mankind, perhaps from a vanished civilization? Or do the winged serpents represent a true spiritual knowing, or perhaps something more, something since lost that is now utterly outside of modern man's understanding, perhaps the very meaning of God? Hey, Eris. Noon blue apples. Visible, like voodoo gods. Why is there a crime? Is it to promote chaos? Do they propagate terror so we beg them for more police, better surveillance technology, and spy satellites? Why are we on our knees begging them to protect us when it's their incompetence that got us into this mess in the first place? Ask yourself why they want to harm you. Because they do. And they're right there. <laughs> that wasn't even funny. <laughs> My on our panties in a major twist. It's not funny. Girl, you need to get a grip. You don't understand. I think please don't say you think they're after you. I was crossing the street and, and, and this car just sped up right at me. This is New York. That's what they do. Hey, it's Howard. Uh, I've got some more stuff for you. Hi. Hey, those are for you. Thanks. Anything to do to fight the new world order. To deny the man. Defy authority, sister. Subvert the dominant paradigm. 
I'm as mad as hell and I'm not gonna take it anymore. I'm as mad as hell and I'm not gonna take it anymore. I'm as mad as hell and I'm all. Are you crazy? What? You're afraid, aren't you? No, I, I can tell it's starting to get to you, isn't it? Welcome to the Chapel Perilous. No, nothing can ever be the same. Sorry, I got sidetracked. Don't worry about it. I'm beginning to see the immutable frailty in the human condition. I hate when that happens. We've managed to become afraid of ourselves even. This is getting crazy. Why am I getting myself deeper into this insanity? Why do we bungee jump or skydive? It's to realize the extremes. That's why plays like Hamlet are so popular. It's to experience the thousand natural shocks that flesh is heir to. Maybe the only time we know we're alive is when we're not taking it for granted. In other words? In other words, go with it. Use it before it uses you. deal of conjecture about this little phrase but apparently it's an anagram you scramble the letters and you come up with this I tego arcana dei which means are you ready for this I hide the secrets of God now these these parchments have scion written all over them have you seen this that is a list of the supposed Grand Masters of the Priory of Sion. It's a secret society which claims everyone from Isaac Newton to Leonardo da Vinci. No. Well, I'm surprised that you haven't seen that yet. 
You see, it's this list that, that, that makes the Priory of Sion either the one of the most influential secret societies of all time or one of the most elaborate pranks of all time. They allegedly possess the Holy of Holies, which the Templars took from the Temple of Solomon. Now, that is supposed to be a secret that could conceivably change the world in a very real sense. As for noon blue apples, the fresh palm bleu could be anything blue and round. In fact, palm bleu is a provincial slang for raisin, grapes. And as for amidi palm bleu, the D also means meridian. Noon is the sun's meridian. So noon blue apples, most grapes. Now, if this were a place, since the clue is in French, I would bet on the south of France. Nicholas Flamel. Nicholas Flamel. Da Vinci, one of the greatest minds mankind has ever produced. Robert Flood, England's leader of esoteric thought. Charles Radcliffe, founder of Scottish Rite Freemasonry. Newton, one of the greatest minds the world has yet to see, also an alchemist. Cocteau's mystical visions, esoterics, alchemists, illuminations, leaders of their time. South of France. They didn't find you there. You led them there, didn't you? So what did you lead them to? What were they looking for? What did they find? Nothing to chance. History. Change. Think. The commonality of the human animal. The church hates you. Banned. Censored. Common. Unchangeable. Geometry. Church Manchin. 
I was at first uh, finding an angle of 75 degrees on all these paintings, and then I realized it's a triangulation. Yes, 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 it's there. This is a map of Jerusalem drawn by the Templars and encrypted with geometry, which was at that time considered demonic magic. So how does this geometry exist in religious art of all things? The cross of Lorraine is a cross staff for finding angles. That's what it represents? No, 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 that's what it is, you see. It's a tool for finding the hidden geometry. And so it's become a symbol of the geometry metaphor, the hidden secret. You know that the Templars designed and built the greatest cathedrals of Europe, and then they were burned at the stake for heresy. So what does that tell you about their work? Apple. You startled me. So I noticed. Are you all right? Is there something you need? Perhaps we can help. This is a safe house, a sanctuary, a home to come back to. Harris. How do you know my name? You told me. No, I didn't. Don't you remember me? Father Plantard. It was years ago. No, I don't, I don't know you. Is my ass. The harder you stare at me, the harder I stare right back at you. No, I'm watching you. Eris? Eris, are you okay? No. They're everywhere I turn. I, I think there are people watching. <sighs> Look, let's get out of here. Maybe go get trashed. We could get something to eat, some high sky crab, Chinese seafood. That's almost as bad as noon blue apples, right? High sky crab, that's noon blue apples. How do you figure? High noon, sky blue crab apples. They were here. Come on, it's just like a coincidence. What, what like the pyramid's perfect geometry? Like, like primitive tribes knowing double star systems? What the hell are you talking about? Well, come with us.
is that? Radio Free World. Pirate radio station that broadcasts somewhere in the city. Is this phenomenon called society a fluke? Is this phenomenon called human consciousness an orchestration? An experiment? A deliberate and sanctified process of manipulated evolution? Of technological Darwinism? Did they build the pyramids just to show us they can do anything? Are they monuments to the fact that they can fuck with the laws of physics and rationality and therefore are perfectly capable of building our thought processes too. Is that supposed to be some kind of a sick joke? Or a hint? A rude promise so as to remind us they are everywhere. Oh, they are good, no question about that. A seething, grinning, cosmically proportioned type of good that can twist and pretzel the very fabric of space-time into their own desire of novelty item, merely for their own amusement. For chuckles, for yucks, <laughs> wars, famines, plagues, <laughs> greed, hate, ignorance, <laughs> stop it, you're killing us. So, my friend, Resistance is you. So drown yourself in denial. Break out the booze or the Prozac. Turn on the TV. Roll over and go back to sleep. That is all. <laughs> So this is it, the recon platoon for the revolution of human consciousness. Our loyalists, our zealots, our Essenes. This is a detox center, rehab from the lie of society so we can take that next lunatic step into the evolution of the human mind. Here, we refuse blind faith. Blind faith, because it's exactly that blindness. We shun reason. reason. Reason, because it falls victim to the limitations of our senses. We wish to kick the junk of ignorance. 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 We wish to kick the junk of ignorance because most of us are deaf, dumb, and blind anyway. And it's and it's and it's fear. Fear. It's fear. Fear. That. It's fear that keeps us from conquering all of that. Lovecraft's fear of the unknown. A conspiracy of the senses. Exactly. And it starts with noon blue apples. The meridian. The peak of grapes. Wine. This wine will be my blood. The blood of Christ. Or... Better yet. The bloodline of Christ. So what if it is? Because it changes fucking everything. The best thing about all this, the very shit and giggles of it all <laughs> is that that's just a fraction of the damage you know that's a long code what else does it hide because with just noon blue apples we can crash the system wipe the slate clean and start anew so you're talking what world domination sure why not Size doesn't matter, at first, but impact does. Small things can go a long way, do some serious damage. Jesus started with only 12. It's funny that you should mention world domination, because they've already done it. There's someone you need to meet.
So this is the young lady. Son. Dad. I'm sure you have, oh, so many questions, none of which I'll answer, of course. Do you believe in God, little girl? No. Maybe you should start. Are you afraid? No. Maybe you should start that, too. Why? You really want to know? Do you really want to know how expendable you are? Tell me what purpose could possibly be served by truly knowing how hopelessly pathetic your insignificant life really is. You're all sheep. Come on, give me a little bleat. Tell me how bad it makes you feel. <laughs> you are just no fun. I'm really not getting through to you, am I? One question. Maybe. Is Paul McCartney dead? <laughs> You're okay. So I'll give you this. God is a code word. It's cipher. What for? For nothing you could possibly imagine, sheep girl. This is all just a game, don't you? Are you one of them? There is no them. There is no conspiracy. Yes, there is. What was that all about? She was just saying she thinks we're full of shit. Rosalind? Come on, pick up. Hello? 
Faith, are you there? Please. I don't know where else to go. They control everything. They are watching you. They know who you are. You cannot run. You cannot hide. I remember when I was 10 at this Bible school. I hated it. So I told them. And they asked me not to come back. I defied their order, so they told me to go outside and play. Deny what they tell you. Ignore what they show you. Seek the essential truth, the core underlying truth of all things. You can't know the core truth. Yes, but you can know it's there. So be open to that possibility. Your longing is your gift. It's the first and greatest step. Eris! Eris, know the difference. I just want everything to be that simple again. What did you tell him? Nothing. What do you mean, nothing? Nothing. What did you tell him? Nothing. Eris, wait! The darkness is vast and terrifying. The silence is deafening in its predatory shrieking. We are bound, shackled to the derelict craft of the Greeks, awaiting to be dashed against the jagged rocks of true knowing. Beware, that terrifying light can sever the darkness and bring us sight. Sight unseen. Sight unknown. They're going to be coming for you too, Eris. 
Paris. We can help you, but only if you tell us everything that you know. Eris, if we take what you know and what Zeus said, we can initiate a new order. New governments, new religions, new gods. Who knows? A thousand years down the road, we could be goddesses. Blessed are the noon blue apples. And we could be the shepherds. We who control the herds. That's not what Zeus was saying. Well, he's dead. And we're not. Can you hear yourself? Come on, Eris. I can only help you if you tell us what you know. Why don't you let me see your note? Now. What can I say? We were at a wall. A little push, a little prod, drop some hints. Who knows, you might find something we missed. Something essential. You'd be surprised how often the truth stares you right in the face and you're just not seeing it. God damn you. Yeah, sure. But God is a code word. God toasted Sodom and Gomorrah. Christ rose the dead. What is that power that God is the code word for? Guess what? It exists. And they have it. The Illuminati, the Priory of Zion, whatever. They don't hold the bloodline of Christ, but the mastery of that power, that alchemical state of being, that is noon blue apples. And you know what that means, don't you? It means the next leap in the evolution of the human mind. It means advancing the distance from the first amoeba to us today. The next step is again that far. We're shit. They're gods. So. Come on. Tell me what it is. Ask Giles Reasoner. He won't fucking tell me. Now you won't tell me, huh? No one will tell me. It's a conspiracy. Yeah, fuck you. Give me the book. I didn't find anything. Oh, I think you did. It's not for you, you don't wanna know. Yes, I do. <laughs> Dr. St. Clair. Hey, I just talked to a friend who's a 32nd degree Freemason. He says noon blue apples means a sort of Masonic prank. I don't know. Something to consider. It could all be nothing but a big joke. Paris! Wait! Oh, lady. Officer, help! Just got a call about some disturbances. There are people in my apartment. Okay, okay, calm down. Let's have a look. Who are you? Miss, please. Who do you work for? Miss Wayne. Who do you work for? Okay?
Interesting. Most interesting. <laughs>